Yo, Elliot, can you talk about the difference between a good cry and when crying is some sort of addiction? I know you always advocate for crying, and if you could clear up that part, that would be great. Yo, Elliot! Thank you. Very good question, my friend, because there are a lot of hysterical criers out there, a lot of them women, where they're just tears every two minutes, tears, 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 tears. It's not like the therapy I'm describing in my videos when I say we must sob. There's a big difference between crying and sobbing. The value in sobbing and the reason why I say it's so important for us is because it is a deep bioenergetic catharsis that rises up from our belly. When someone lets out the spontaneous convulsions associated with sobbing, <laughs> it almost looks like they're throwing up or having an orgasm because their body is out of control and the spontaneity takes over and it comes from deep in the belly. <laughs> someone who's crying is not going to be able to shout while they're crying. They're not going to be able to be mad while they're crying. They're not going to be able to whine while they're crying. But someone who's doing shallow crying, someone who's not sobbing, but alligator tears like you describe. And many people use it because yes, they are addicted to it. It's a little spill off of energy for them, but also they use it to manipulate. Just the tears will be coming. You, it's an it's a eye-focused crying. Eye-focused crying, but then they are also talking while they're crying, pointing fingers while they're crying yelling while they're crying, and it's bullshit. They're just hysterical. They're just trying to manipulate you. A deep, embodied, cathartic cry is like an exorcism. You are releasing many years of old, trapped trauma oftentimes, especially for guys, since we don't cry when we're sad. We don't know how. We're so out of touch with the sensations in our body. We've been stuffing it down for so long that when it rises, it just gets stuck. Oftentimes it gets stuck at the solar plexus or stuck in the throat and we just shut up and walk away. But when you're open and when you're relaxed and when you're breathing deeply, and when you notice a sensation of sobbing coming up, it'll begin at all of the tension points. The chin starts to wrinkle because that's where we typically hold. The belly will start to jiggle or feel weird because the solar plexus is where we hold. Notice those spontaneous vibrations in the body, mu muscle contractions, spontaneous muscular contractions. That's what the vibration is I'm talking about. It's very embodied. When someone's about to cry, notice yourself when you're about to cry. As I've opened up my ability to express myself, sobbing is much more easy for me, so much so that sometimes in movies, I catch myself. But I know when it's coming because I'll get it here first. And the heart, oh. I'll feel it right here first. And it wants to come out. It wants to be released. It wants to be honored. It wants to be exercised. So pay very close attention, my friend, to those who are alligator criers, they call them, alligator tears, manipulators, or hyster hysterical eyeball criers. They're not catharting. They're not releasing. They're not healing. They're usually manipulating. Either that or they're just addicted to eye water, like you described. And then pay very close attention to a body, an embodied cry. It's not about what's going on here. That's why I use the word sob one more time. It's about something coming up and rising from beneath that wants to be released. And when it's done, you feel done, done. Thank <laughs> you.